Well, my first guest, Star Parker, I've been telling you about her. She went through some tremendous obstacles in her life. She's gone through poverty. I told you about her as a single mother on welfare, how she battled drug addictions, abortions. Well, listen, I know you want her to come right on out. I want you to take a look at this before we meet her. I didn't grow up in, in Christianity or Christian home, so I got lost very early in my life. I started getting involved in um, criminal activity and drug activity and at a really young age and then progressed into sexual promiscuity that led me to use abortion as a birth control. I was just really out of control and after the fourth time having an abortion, I just had an instinct that there has to be something wrong with this. I didn't change my sexual patterns and was pregnant again within a very short period of time and opted to have that child. So I looked out at my income options and welfare was the most viable. And so I ended up uh, going and signing up and for the next three and a half years watching my life spiral further and further into this dark hole. But I didn't know how to get help. So I was looking to subsidize my welfare check with under the table money. But this particular business I went into said, well, you couldn't work here even if we wanted you to because your lifestyle is unacceptable to God. And when they said God, I got chills. And so I left. And so they kept calling me and, and just checking on me. And then one day he asked me to go to church and I did. And when the preacher said, would you like to be saved? Would you like to receive Christ? I said, yes. I ended up going to college for marketing. So that's when I went into my own business. Over time in developing out that business, I started seeing how God provides financially. But I also started seeing this political world, that there were problems. So I started addressing some of these cultural problems in this business that I started, which was a magazine. I opened my Bible and it was on Jeremiah 5. He started talking about, among my people are found wicked men. And then the last little verse said, but what will you do in the end? And that's when I knew I needed to make a decision if I'm going to be an activist. So I made a decision then that I was never going to leave my story and that I would always share what God had done in any political environment that I was in. And I think that in my willingness to say, Lord, I just want to be available. It allowed him to start moving in my life, to start moving me up to different heights. And when you do that, today is the day of your salvation. Please welcome with me, Star Parker. to have you. Welcome to the Helpline. Well, thank you. <laughs> what a joy to have you here. Well, it's good to be with you. <laughs> and to thank God and rejoice together with you Amen. over what God has done for you in your life. You're a regular commentator. I want them yes. to know what kind of a position God has taken you to on CNN, CNBC, Fox News, you debated Jesse Jackson on BET, <laughs> and you fought for school choices on the Larry King program. You defended welfare reform on Oprah Winfrey, and we could go on and on because it doesn't end with how God is using you in the world today. Let's give Star a real great hand for being here. I'm helping. Oh, I tell you, it is absolutely awesome. Now, where are we going to get started on this amazing story? I think where we start is where he starts. When he sees us, he sees us as his favorite. He sees us individual and unique and no matter where we are in that station in life he just wants to touch us and so I had carved out my way and my way was very dark I was living a very aggressive life I was in criminal activity I was in drug activity I was in sexual promiscuity I went in and out of abortion clinic after clinic it wasn't until the fourth time I had a gut instinct way down deep inside that there just has to be something wrong with this you know everything in the society said it's okay but 
you know, I was getting tired. And I got pregnant again within a very short period of time. And this time I opted to have that child. And I ended up living on welfare. That's Angel. That's yes, Angel. that's Angel. Uh, who today is married and has my wonderful grandbaby. The Lord wow. will take you a long way. Wow. Yes. yes. God is good. He's very good. He's very good. And so when, I, when he found me, I was in a little dark hole. And I didn't even know it. I mean, I was so out of control that... I thought that living on welfare was just my lot, and that's what I was going to just do. I wasn't thinking much about a future, or, and I hadn't known the Lord. And then one day I looked to subsidize my welfare check, and I went into this business in South Central L.A., and the men there were Christian men and said they didn't pay like that, and my lifestyle was unacceptable. Now, <laughs> I just want to point out to us right here a little caveat that the God we serve is a God of plan and purpose I know. I think and so. nothing in life happens to you by accident I believe that and you didn't walk into that organization nope. you could have walked into and one right. where they would have been happy to pay you under that's the right. table that's right but you walked into a, a Christian organization yeah. Yeah. and said no way that's right <laughs> I didn't want to work there at all after that, and they didn't want me working there because they said my lifestyle was unacceptable to God. And that was the first time I actually started thinking about, does God think about my life? And I remembered some of the activity I'd gotten involved in, the breaking and entering, the armed robbery. And, you know, I was living with a man at the time, and I was um, just out of control. And they kept calling me, wanting me to go to church with them. And so once I made the decision I was going to go to church with them, mostly to get them off my back, I heard the gospel, and that's when I knew that, wow, there's somebody that loves me deeply, and I wanted to be a part of it. <laughs> Talk to me about this victim of racism. You know, sometimes we are affected in this life by mental lies right. because the enemy of our life is an incredible liar. Right, right. And he wants us to believe lies. That's right. What? Well, for me, it wasn't just a mental lie. I, all that represented me because they wore the same color skin I did in the political arena, whether it was in the media arena, told me that I was a victim, that America was inherently racist and there was really no place for blacks to excel unless government was involved. And I believed all of that. And I also believed that we could do anything we want um, in life, that there were no absolutes. So you couple those things together and it's pretty um, dark. It's pretty easy to get lost and so that's why I was lost but in Christ I found that God just loves all of us and he loves us so much that he allows us to intermingle with one another and I found good solid Christian friendships outside of my ethnicity so I decided in my own life that I was not going to look at color that I was going to look to Christ every time a situation <laughs> oh, arose. Because our God is colorblind. Yeah, yeah he, he, he pretty much is to a certain extent, but then also he uses our race. So it's an amazing thing. It's the same way that I do a little bit of gardening now. And, you know, I love my roses, but I also love my lilies. And I look <laughs> at all of the different um, aspects of his creation, and I see that he has put us as a part of that. And so when you think about racism and think about how you can get caught up in thinking that... Um, but that spirit... Oh, it'll racist. get on you. That's, that's what really started you down this road. Well, it? it did, because what happened was my dad was in the military, and it was during a very hard time in our country, and the Vietnam War was going on, and so we were outside, and then the next thing we know, Dr. King was killed, and so there, yeah. were, a lot, there were a lot of tensions that also um, encouraged me to get lost, and not just where we having a civil rights movement, we were having a sexual revolution and a war on poverty all at the same time. So you put that all together, and you can end up with an angry person person who's now 12, 13, 14 years old and could get misguided. And it wasn't until the Lord started speaking through the minister and through the scriptures that I just found out not only how empty I was, but how much he would fill me. You walked into this church mm -hmm. and there's where you heard the gospel yeah. and you run 
Yeah, I did. <laughs> to Jesus. I did. And you found out that his arms were open. They were very open. They were very open. And that he cared about every part of our life because it was a couple of years into him cleaning up my life before he started speaking to me through the scripture about living on welfare. And in fact, the preacher looked out at 4,000 people. I'm like two years into this now. Right. Getting in all these he little areas. And he was like 419. Right. And he said, my God will supply your need, not and the here government. You are, <laughs> and here you are living on welfare. I know. <laughs> Wait, if it's God or government, God or government, and I think, well, I already know what the government can do. They keep you impoverished and, and keep you dependent. Let me see what God will do. And so I wrote my caseworker, and I was able to make a transition out. I want you to tell me about why you tried to commit suicide. I think I got lost even deeper in a hole. And, you know, it's an interesting thing about the spirit of suicide. It tries to grab people, I think, when the Lord is trying to take them to a higher place. And when we find, you know, what was it, a great theologian that said, he who suffers most is capable of yielding most. So people that will allow that suicide spirit to come on them are actually more open to hear from the Lord, open to say, you know, um, I can't do this life by myself. So and somebody watching you right now yeah. should listen to what you're telling them. Well, they should because... It's easy to say, I'm just going to give up. It's hard to live this life. It can be a life of suffering. It can be a life of pain. Every day is very different. But what, what they need to know, what you need to know is that you're God's favorite. He loves us so much that he individually says, I have better plan for you. And it's difficult to believe and trust that. But once you do and you say, okay, I can map out my whole life. But if I just look at today to say, how beautiful he is, how great are you, Lord, then he'll begin the process of healing you up. It's so um, complex, but yet it's so simple that God was in Christ. He was reconciling the world to himself, that he doesn't count our sin against us. And that's, I think, what got me not only through that problem in my life, but also all the others. You listen to Star, because what she's telling you, you could never find in a book. It's an experience of life that's real, that can transcend into your experience. You know, we get these wonderful spiritual highs, yeah. and you got it yeah. when you rushed into the arms of Jesus. You do. But then it was a day by day, right. day that's by right. day, and it's going to be a day by day experience for you but you've got to make that choice. Lord, I'm going to come into your arms and I'm going to trust you because what you did for Star right. is what I want you to do for me. Star, could you pray a little simple prayer right now? Lord, I just lift you up right now. You said just lift up the name of Jesus. So I just lift up your name right now, Lord, that you will Give a special touch to that one that is in despair right now, to that one that feels they have no escape, Lord God, to that one that doesn't know how they're going to pay their bill, to that one who has to s tell their preacher dad that they're pregnant. Lord God, I just pray for that one that, that is on drugs and keeps promising themselves to get off. Lord, that they will enter in that place of rest with you, that your peace will come upon them and overwhelm them, Lord God, that they will learn to take little bitty baby steps with you, that they will know how much you love them, that you have looked at them as, their, as, as, as your favorite, that you just want to surround them with your love, your joy, and your peace today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I accept that prayer for you. And I believe God is reaching out and touching you. Let's tell Star we are so thankful for her being on the helpline today. We love you, Star. Thank you for being here. God bless you.